Sometimes you need to combine different but related data into a single file. Uh, for example, you have two tables here, one table with donor characteristics and another table with the amounts that donors have given. And in order to answer questions that relate the donor characteristics to the amounts that they've given, you need to add this donation information into this table here. And this video will show you how to do that using R. I'll also give you tips on how to avoid errors when you're combining data like this. For this video, I'll be using R version 4.1.2 and the dplyr package version 1.0.0. If you don't know why that's important, check out the video that I created on understanding packages in R. Now, every time I need to combine related data into one table, there are five things that I ask myself. The first one is, how many rows are in each table? Now we can see here that the donors table has 20 rows. That's one row for each donor. And the donations table has 100 rows, which is one row for each donation that was given. The next thing I look at is whether there are duplicated columns, that is columns that exist in both tables. If I preview both tables, you can see that in the donors tab, there's ID, name, zip code, last attended event, the donations, there's ID, amount given, and date. So the only duplicated columns in these tables is the ID column. If you had the same column represented in multiple files and you didn't want that to be the case, then you'd have to consider deleting some of those columns, um, either from one table or the other. The next thing I consider is which columns I'll be using to match slash join the records. For this purpose, we'll be using the ID. This is the donor ID variable because it exists in the donors ta table and then the donations table. That will allow us to associate amount given and the date that it was given to the correct donor by ID. The next thing I explore is how many unique values there are for those matching variables that we'll be using to combine the data. Here's what I mean by that. So we know that the donors table and the donations table have a different number of rows in each. The donors has 20, the donations has 100. We also know that they have a common variable that we want to use to match records, which is called ID. It's important to know how many of those values there are in each table. Put another way, how many unique donors are there as indicated by the ID column in the donors table and how many unique IDs or donors are represented in the donations table as represented in the ID column in the donations table. Here's how we can do that. So I have two functions here. Um, let's read this from the inside out. Inside here, I have the donors table and specifically I have the ID column in that table. I just run that it'll just list the ID values that are listed there in the donors table now what I want is I want to make sure that I'm getting only the unique ID values and so that's why I use this unique function in the base package now because this table has just um, one row for each donor it has 20 unique values that go from 1 through 20 for the ID then the next thing I want to do is look at the length of all of that. So I take the unique list of ID values in the donors table and I ask the question, how long is it? There are 20 such unique values. Now it's important that I'm doing this for the donations table also because I know that there are 100 rows, but I, um, but many of those ID values here are duplicated because each donor had the opportunity to show up more than once. So I resolve that by using the same thing that I had here. I take the ID value, ID column from the donations table. I first ask how many unique IDs are there? And then how long is that? And if I do that, I see that there are actually only 19. So we already know that the, that um, not all IDs in the donor table are present in the donations table, suggesting that some donors did not give any, at, at least, uh, that one donor did not give any donations as indicated in this donations table. So for a visual, what we just did was we asked the question, are the same number of donors in the donors table um, present in the donations table? And that's important because a client may have given you uh, incomplete data, they may have given you inconsistent data, and knowing the answer to this question can help you go back to the client and say, hey, there's something wrong, um, I can do the analyses here, but just so you know, I don't have donation data on all the donors that you gave me, etc. The final question I look into is, which table should be the primary table? Here's what I mean by that. So recall that you have two tables. We can either start with the donors table and then add data to this table, 
or we can start with the donations table and then add data to the donations table. Now, which one you make the primary table depends on which population you're interested in talking about. If you care about all the donors, regardless of if they gave any donations in this table here, then you would make the donors table the primary table. If instead you only care about those who gave money as indicated in the donations table, then you could start with the donations table as the primary table. Now let's say I want the donors table to be the primary table. And so I can use this left join function from the dplyr package. And what I'll give it here is, um, because it's a left join, this is for the situation where the primary table is the first thing that you write out here um, in this function. So left join donors is gonna be our primary table. So X is equal to donors. Then Y is equal to donations. That will be the other table on the right. And we are going to use ID as the matching variable, which is what I indicate with the by argument here. So if I call this combined data, and then I run this, I can see that the resulting file has 101 observations of six variables. So I can click on that. This is what that file looks like, ID, name, zip code, last attended event, which were all columns that were in the donors table. And then now it has the amount given and date, which are the columns from the donations table. So if we inspect this file, it says combined data, there are 101 rows, which might seem odd, but recall that um, the donors table was our primary table. And one of these IDs, um, ID number 20, I believe, didn't have any information in the donations table. So instead of having the same number of rows as the donations, it also included that record that did not have any donation. And we can confirm this by clicking on this and looking at ID 20. And we'll see down here that this person had no amount given or date. And again, this is the result of having treated the donors table as the primary table, which means all the records from the donors table will be retained. You may also be wondering, well, why when we combine this table and we used donors as the primary table, does our new file have um, over 100 rows? And that is because the donors or the donations table has multiple instances for the same IDs in the donors table. And so um, what R does when you use this left join and make this table as the um, primary table here, It'll say, oh yeah, well, we've got multiple rows for ID one in this donations table. So I need to accommodate that. So it will, in order to insert these two rows, it will duplicate this information that number of times, which is why we see in this combined data here that ID one for Sheridan Kelsey, this information appears two times because that person had two records in the donations table. Now, there are other types of joins that you can do in dplyr, but I use the left join almost exclusively in the vast majority of my projects. If um, you want to explore other ways of joining data, just leave a comment and I'll make a video about these alternative ways. If this video has been helpful and you want to learn more about how to use R for your data analysis needs, please subscribe.